Hello students and welcome to my last video for this unit for IS2 that we did uh, for the next generation science standards and this is going to be on the carbon cycle. And so we wanted to put photosynthesis and cell respiration in the concept of the carbon cycle and see what's going on. And so the big thing to think with the carbon cycle is what are the reservoirs? Where is carbon being stored on earth? How does it move between those reservoirs? And we call that movement flows. And then how are humans influencing this? So just like all my videos, this is uh, not for profit. This is meant just to help you or other students who may find it on the interwebs. All right, so here's some terminology. Like I said, the reservoirs or the sinks or the places where carbon accumulates within the earth system. And then flows are the processes by which it can be exchanged. And so can you brainstorm a list of reservoirs or sinks where carbon exists? And then how does it flow between them? All right, let's see what you got. Did you get the following reservoirs? So carbon is held in the atmosphere, the biosphere, the ocean, sedimentary rocks, and fossil fuels. So let's go through each one. In the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is held as, or excuse me, carbon is held as carbon dioxide gas. Right? And it's a, there's a lot of it up there, and it's uh, a greenhouse gas. And a greenhouse gas is good in that it keeps the earth warm enough for us. But if there's too much, then that could be negative, right? And the earth can be too hot. Carbon is held in the biosphere, and that means the living uh, earth around, around us. So it's held in trees and in tree trunks. It's held inside of you, right? And you, you have carbon inside your DNA, inside of carbohydrates, inside of um, cell membranes as well, right? And so that holds a lot of carbon. The ocean can hold carbon and it holds it as bicarbonate salts. So it enters the ocean as CO2 and then it dissociates. And so uh, we'll practice that in class by blowing into uh, an indicator called baromethymol blue. And so the ocean can hold lots of carbon dioxide or lots of carbon, excuse me. Rocks hold uh, carbon as well. So rocks are uh, minerals pushed together. And so there's a pretty cool article I think it was two years ago about rocks in Oman that uh, seemed to hold lots of carbon. And so some people were saying, hey, if we could learn more about these rocks, maybe that could be a place to store carbon so we wouldn't have so much in the atmosphere heating us up. Um, and I'll have to look that up. I think it's like peridotite or something like that. And then we have fossil fuels, right? And so those would be carbon stored as uh, oil or gas or coal uh, under the ground. And us humans can tap into that to power things, um, but then we're going to be releasing it or moving that carbon from the reservoir of being underground to being in the atmosphere. All right, so this is called uh, an example, or no, excuse me, this is an example of CO2 in the atmosphere over time. And so here you can see it fluctuates over time, um, and it's fluctuated over thousands of years from 280 parts per million down so almost 180 parts per million, and we can measure that by looking at ice cores and sediment cores and foraminifera shells, et cetera. So a good question is why is there natural variation in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere? And there's something called the Milankovitch cycles that you can look up for, look up for that, and that's the distances between the Earth and the sun and the wobble of Earth and how – uh, it's rotating, or not how it's rotating, but uh, the degree on its axis differ over time, and that leads to these different uh, CO2 concentrations, which re led to ice ages and warm times on Earth. But what's important, right? If you look at this and you see it's, you know, it tops out around 300, what is happening at present day? So starting from the Industrial Revolution onwards, right, and really even from, like, World War II onwards, we are just producing tons of carbon dioxide and increasing the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere to way above 400 parts per million. So uh, levels, you know, unseen in Earth's uh, previous history. And from that, you're seeing consequences to that. And we know that CO2 is a greenhouse gas and we can see the Earth warming up. Okay, here are some of those flows. So like the flows are the processes by which carbon moves around. And so we have the flow of photosynthesis and cellular respiration that we've studied in class. 
So photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and it's going to fix it. It's going to rearrange it into glucose or sugars. Uh, animals and plants as well um, take those sugars and they're going to break them down into energy. When they do that, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The rock cycle is able to take carbon and put it into rocks that can then be released when volcanoes erupt and release uh, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And then there's a physical and chemical feedback loop as well. And so uh, rain can come down into the ocean and when it, uh, or even on land, right? And it can carry carbon dioxide with it. And so that is a physical process. And then as the oceans evaporate, it returns that carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So many of you all did a case study on acid rain at Bear Pond that was kind of similar. And then there's human impact. So what's important, I want you to know that there's reservoirs or places where carbon uh, resides in Earth that uh, there's processes that, that move it around those reservoirs. And the big one we studied here was photosynthesis and cell respiration. And that humans are engaging in changing the carbon cycle. We're changing, I guess the best way to say it is we're changing where the carbon is stored from one reservoir or one sink to another, right? And we're really taking it out of the ground and putting it into the atmosphere. And that is having some pretty big consequences for planet Earth. In fact, I think it's the biggest thing that your generation will have to face or one of the biggest things. And so um, I encourage you to take my environmental science class and study more about it. All right, take care. Good luck.